election day, 17 days away, but early voting and mail-in voting are already breaking records around the nation. All right, folks, back to our Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Um, I'm going to take a little break right here, talk about one of our sponsors, freeprints.com. If you're like me, you want to be able uh, to sometimes print out photos, not just email folks or airdrop those photos, uh, then you need to have a source. Well, freeprints.com allows you to get 1,000 photos, 1,000 4 by 6 photos that you can actually print out at a nominal cost. Uh, they'll be shipped directly to you. You can print not just from your phone, but also from Instagram, Facebook, or even Twitter as well. It is uh, the top uh, app out there, some 100,000 five-star ratings. If you go to Google Play or go to iTunes, you can actually download their app, freeprints.com. But do me a favor, when they ask, what did you hear about them? What's the promo code? Put in the name Roland, R-O-L-A-N-D, so they know that our followers, our viewers, are the ones uh, where, where they actually saw this. And so we will surely appreciate you do that. And so uh, support those who are supporting us. So I want you to support freeprints.com. And there is a ton of enthusiasm, but we don't really know whether those voters are more Democrats or more Republicans. The New York Times reports that Democrats have eliminated the turnout deficit that hobbled them during the Obama era. But the surge is centered in white suburban districts. Now, let's keep in mind. 53% of white women voted for Donald Trump in 2016. White college-educated voters also voted for Donald Trump, but polling data shows he has been losing white college-educated voters and white women anywhere from 18 to 30%. Keep in mind, people of color and young people also are not enthusiastic as educated white folks as well. Now, in Georgia, We've seen significant issues there as well. Major voter enthusiasm, and Republicans are doing their best to try to stop that. Folks, the voter suppression they have enacted is deep and wide. 53,000 overwhelmingly majority black voter registrations in Georgia are on a hold right now, and they are the subject of a lawsuit. But an investigation by American Public Media, APM, found that Georgia and some other states are purging voters from the rolls for not voting. In Georgia, the number is about 107,000. Here's what the report said, quote, there's indication that purges have disproportionately affected minority voters in some places. Analyzing all the Georgians purged in 2017, APM reports, APM reports found that in six of every 10 counties across Georgia, black voters were canceled at a higher rate than their white peers for inactivity. And in more than a quarter of those counties, black voters were removed at a rate 1.25 times higher than their their white peers. Now, remember, in Georgia, Stacey Abrams' opponent is the Secretary of State, Brian Kemp, the man that controls the voting rolls. He also, of course, did, did not recuse himself or resign. Now, previous folks who ran for governor, who was Secretary of State, they did so, but he chose not to do so. Now, remember, the, the U.S. Justice Department used to make sure stuff like this didn't happen, but when the Supreme Court voided Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act in Shelby v. Holder, that threw the door open for these southern states to do whatever they wanted without any DOG intervention. Now, you have civil rights organizations who are filing lawsuits against these various states to stop them from doing so, but here's where the Supreme Court comes in as well. And this is where, by, by the Republicans preventing Merrick Garland from getting a hearing and a vote, help them. In the Ohio case, a white man from Ohio sued the state because he was purged from the voting rolls. He was, he was combating an Ohio law that allowed them to do so. What do you think happened? That case went to the Supreme Court and a five to four ruling, the Supreme Court, the Republican conservative Supreme Court, allowed voting purging to take place. As a result, states all across the country follow Ohio's lead, and they've been purging people who have been inactive for one or more election cycles. Here's some more of the American Public Media report. Quote, of the most common voter suppression tactics studied this year by the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, a federal agency, voter ID laws, proof of citizenship requirements, purges, cuts in early voting, and polling place enclosures, Georgia is the only state once under federal oversight to have adopted all five. But that's not the only investigative report and lawsuit today in Georgia. The man behind the report and the lawsuit is Greg Palace, an investigative journalist. He joins us right now. Greg, uh, what we are seeing here, and we've talked about this, and I've covered this 
for years as a journalist. This is clear and precise efforts by Republicans to try to keep as many people as possible, shave them off the voting rolls in order for them to be able to compete with a surge of black voters, Latino voters, and young voters. Oh, like I said earlier, Greg, what we, this is clear and decisive uh, plans of action by the Republican Party to try to shave off as many voters as possible, hundreds of thousands of voters, to suppress the vote because they are afraid since the election of President Barack Obama in 2008 to see young, to see African Americans, to see Latinos, and even young white voters who do not like their policies come out in droves to vote. That's correct. In fact, here's what we found. It's what I found is the ugliest Jim Crow that I can imagine since the 60s, since I was a kid. Um, we have Brian Kemp has removed half a million voters from the voter rolls. He did so on the grounds that they've moved, they've moved from the state, they've moved from their county. In fact, I had to threaten him with a federal lawsuit, me and, and the wonderful Helen Butler of the uh, Georgia Coalition for People's Agenda. We got the list of every single person he's purged from the voter rolls. I'm not counting dead people, people in prison, any of that stuff. I'm counting people he said move. I then went to the top experts, the top experts in voter address confirmation. Now, these are the guys, the catalog companies, you know, the bill collectors, all those who know exactly where you live. So I went to them and I said, okay, here, here's all these people that Brian Kemp said move. They put it through a computer and it was 340. 1,134 Georgians who removed from the voter rolls who still live in Georgia live at the exact registration address where they originally had registered to vote. They're there, they want to vote, and they got no notice, zero, Joe, none, that they won't be able to vote in November. They're going to show up, those who want to vote, and they're going to be shocked. Now, a few of them um, went to uh, gregpalast.com, that's my site, saw themselves on the purge roll, and they were able to re-register. Uh, unfortunately, Roland, um, they were unable, uh, you know, today you can still re-register, but you still won't be able to vote on November 6th. It's ugly and it's racist. The method, by the way, picks out black people, young people, renters, poor people. It's, it's ugly stuff. Greg, uh, here's one of the things that also I think uh, is important that, that we are seeing. And we focus obviously on African Americans and Latinos, but what the Republicans are also doing, they are targeting young white voters. They're targeting elderly white voters. And I'm just trying to understand why white folks are not as angry about voter suppression. And remember, I talked about the Ohio case, the voter purge case. That was a white man from Ohio. And I have been saying to civil rights groups, stop solely focusing on voter suppression about the impact on black people and Latinos that they need to be driving young white people and elderly white people. We saw this in Wisconsin, where they say some 200,000 people were impacted by voter ID. Even though the Obama Department of Justice certified that voter ID law, a federal judge called Governor Scott Walker into court and said, why are you dragging your feet on the issuing of voter ID laws? These laws are impacting young white people and elderly white people. Well, I can tell you it hits home. Uh, I know a young white woman who lives in Georgia, my daughter. She went through living hell to to get uh, to register as a as a Georgia voter, um, and because she's a student. And as far as I know, she told me there's 13,000 students in Savannah, and she told me that she's one of the only students who registered and was able to vote. They are doing their level best to remove the young white voter because the young white voter and the middle-aged African American voter. Vote. Uh, they're basically they're the same color voter. It's called blue, Democratic. That's what they're getting rid of. And low-income voters, low-income whites, by the way, tend to vote Democratic in Georgia, despite the image of you know the guys in the pickup trucks at, at the at the pig roast. Um, but I can tell you this: I asked Brian Kemp about it. I actually he refused to meet with me. So I went and I literally followed his campaign bus and stopped at a barbecue joint in a place called Noonan, Georgia. And in Noonan, uh, I just wanted to ask him some questions. I said, well, are you purging the voter rolls of black voters and young voters so you can get elected? 
Um, why do I have to file a lawsuit to get the name of the, of the purge voters? He had two of his glutes grab me and hustle me off uh, uh, this property. By the way, the owner of the property is unhappy. He says, I don't throw people off of my property. But, you know, the truth is they don't want to answer the question. So now I am taking Brian Kemp into federal court. I filed this very morning in federal court in Atlanta. Uh, if he doesn't want to answer my questions next to his campaign bust, then excuse me, sir, you're going to answer the questions in front of a federal judge, my questions and the and the questions of the um, the voting rights movement of Atlanta. We got a lot of support today from Gerald Griggs of the NAACP in Atlanta, from uh, Joe Beasley of uh, Rainbow Push. Um, I got to tell you, but, you know, I'm uh, here's a sad one. Uh, you know, the uh, I, while I have a lot of help from the African-American press and young progressive press, um, like things like the Atlanta Journal-Constitution are missing in, in action. Um, the new Jim Crow is very uninteresting to the establishment because the establishment benefits by having their establishment candidates, and they're not going to give up that power so easily in Georgia. All right, Greg Powell, we appreciate you being on this case. And again, we're going to keep pressing this issue. We're less than 20 days from Election Day, uh, and we're going to do all we can to ensure uh, that we call out the GOP as much as we can. We sure appreciate it. Thanks a lot.